Nora, welcome in to this little meetup, I guess you could say, of the future is female. Um, like, super awesome to have you on. How are you doing right now? Um, I'm doing okay, I guess. Um, I mean, definitely, there's been a lot of crazy things going on as society as a whole. And then everyone has things that are happening within their families that are changing. And I think the best, like anyone is doing, in my opinion, is okay. I think that's like a pretty good way of putting it. Um, I've just been trying to do things that make me happy every day and to keep me like as much so in a routine as I can be. And so that's been where I'm at right now. Yeah, I mean, you 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 mentioned it. You're kind of at this standstill right now. Um, when but when you heard the news last week, whatever, uh, that the Olympics were going to be postponed, what was your initial reaction? What was going? What was the first thing that popped into your head when you heard that news? Um, I was really relieved. I think a lot of talk had been about this, and then, you know, it's hard. I ended up like deleting social media for a while because I just was so, I couldn't look at anything anymore because there were so many different articles and so many different people saying different things. And, you know, I think the hardest thing about this whole thing is a lot of people don't know what's going on because you read one thing, you read another, nothing seems to match up. And it just leaves a lot of people way more confused and stressed out than they need to be about situations because no one really knows what's going on. No one knows until a final decision's been made and all these different news sources and things are saying things and you just get more and more confused. And so I think there, I was, um, at the time I was in Mission Viejo training with my, under my club coach who um, is been an Olympic coach before. And so I had talked to him about it and I said, what do you think the chances are? And he was like, honestly, I think it's gonna be pretty likely, but let's just keep training. If things change, we'll adapt to them. And then um, we got a call, a text message before morning practice that um, the Olympics has been postponed and all practices are canceled until further notice, which was more of a relief because it was so hard to get pool time. It was so hard to figure out other ways to keep our strength up. And like the only, the only thing we could really control was what we were eating in a sense. And like, so then I'm stressed out about feeling my body correctly, because if that's the only thing I can control right now, then like, I have to make sure it's like as close to perfect as possible. And so it was more of a relief because I just felt like, okay, I have some time to prepare for trials. Like it's not going to be this last minute of preparation and I'm going to go there and not perform the way I should or I'm expected to. So it's definitely was like a big relief off of my shoulders, I guess you could say. Were there any conversations within the Sun Devil Swim team with Bowman, Stratton Mills about, you know, the Olympics being canceled? Because you said you were talking with your club team coach. Were there any conversations within the Sun Devil Swim team about possibility of no Olympics for this year, at least? Um, I think Bob stated it pretty well in his um, uh, in what he said in his article about the Olympics postponed. Um, we never really had a direct, like, conversation at that time. Um, we've had them post them. We've had, we've had conversations on Zoom with our whole team uh, post the Olympics being postponed. But I think no one really knew much. And um, our coaches have done a really great job of just supporting us in any way and just making sure that any decision that we make is what we want to do and what's going to make us better in the future. Because at this point, that's all we can do. And so um, Bob and Rachel pretty much just said like, hey, like if you can train at home, then like go train at home. If you don't have a place to train, just do what you can right now. And then that's like the best that you can do. And so they talked to, they talked to us about it afterwards and just kind of like our next step and, um, you know, for this point, like everything's just kind of done and we're just in a standstill, just kind of waiting for the next day. And so hopefully we can get back in to like a routine or as normal as possibly maybe in May, but no one knows. And so you kind of just keep, you kind of just keep waiting and keep doing what you can for right now. 
I mean, you, you mentioned doing what you can right now. You said that just a few weeks ago or last week you were in Mission Viejo training. So what are you doing right now to kind of pass the time and stay kind of in that routine as best you can? So, um, yeah, I was in Mission Viejo training for a little bit. Um, my family has been going through kind of the same thing that every family is going through. My mom's a nurse practitioner, so she works directly with um, the situation at hand and all these patients. And so we kind of made a um, family decision that it probably wasn't best for me to be home right now because um, in situations like this, like you don't want to be in an environment where you probably directly are in contact with people that have it. And my mom is such a strong lady and she just was like, Nora, like I need to look out for you as my daughter right now. So I think it's better for you to be in Tempe. And so I made the decision to go back to school. And then um, I have been just, I'm such an outdoorsy person as it is. And so staying inside is very, very hard for me. <laughs> and so like getting out and hiking and just trying to do one thing a day. And like I said before, that makes me happy and makes me sane. And like this crazy time where all these changes are happening I've been running. Swimmers don't run, but a lot of us are trying to. And so I was joking around and telling my friends that I wrote, wrote 10 minutes the other day for a mile pace. That's terrible, <laughs> but I tried really hard. Everybody and so, more, right? <laughs> yeah, but it's been fun. It's like, I, um, I live right next to Papago Park in Arizona. And so I've been doing trail running and just trying to get like, a different scenery of things and doing what I can with all this stuff. So definitely getting outside once a day at least and just using the other time to keep up on my schoolwork and make sure that I'm staying on track and meeting with mentors, tutors, teachers, however that might be. So speaking of schoolwork, I, we always hear, you know, the rigorous schedule of a student athlete. Now that rigorous schedule is all but gone what's the yeah. difference in not just I mean everyone's lifestyle is different at this point but is it relieving a little bit to you know you just have school work you can run when you want you don't have practice at this time weights at this time what, what is that like what is the, the difference um, like you know I was actually just talking to a teammate about this the other day I am um, anyone who knows me personally knows that I'm a very, um, kind of like free spirited, um, crazy mentality, just like go, 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 go. Like I never stop moving. My mom tells me all the time, Nora, you don't know how to relax. And so this time I've been trying to learn how to relax and it's not really working that well because I hate relaxing. I love to be moving and doing things. And so for me, like, this is something that is a really good kind of like little sight to what's going to happen when swimming and sports ends. And like, I don't have that rigorous schedule anymore. And like, it's definitely really hard to get into a routine because I'm so used to waking up at 515 every morning, going to practice swimming and then doing a run or an extra set of cardio and then going back home, making breakfast going to tutoring, going to class, going back to practice, lifting. And like that has been my life since I was 10 and I'm 21 now. And so it's been 11 years of doing the same thing every day and to not be ready for that schedule to be taken, even though not every day I want to do that. Not every day I go to practice wanting to be there. Not every day I go to class wanting to learn. Like not having that as even an option has been probably one of the most like eye-opening experience for me and probably my teammates as well. Like you don't want that to be gone. And like, it's so nice and it keeps you so on track. And that helps me with my schoolwork. That helps me like everything plays together. Like I never really realized how important like going to class and going to tutoring and going to practice was for each other. Like you don't think that like being focused in class has anything about going to practice later that night, but it gives you a reason to be focused in class because you're like, I'm a student athlete. 
I have to be on track right now. Like I have to be focused. I have to get good grades. And so I think that's been something that I've been struggling a lot with is understanding that like, okay, Nora, you're still a student athlete, but right now, like you're a student, you're really truly like only a student right now. And you need to stay on top of that. And like, so I think that's been like kind of a crazy thing with the um, adjustment of like not having that routine is finding a way for each of those to excel in their different ways. I mean, you, it, you even mentioned it. So there's, there's, you know, the, the physical part of being a student. And then there's this entire other part of you can't be home right now. Be, like your mom doesn't want you at home right now for very obvious reasons. Right. What's yeah. that, you know, what, what's that been like not being able to be with your family and having to keep that distance almost, almost out of love, I guess you could say, like, this is one of yeah. the first things that distancing is out of love. Yeah. How, no. I, yeah. I mean, my mom told me, she's like, Nora, you know, if like, you, you know, if you could be home right now and that was the best place for you, like we would like, we would love for you to be here and like, that's what we want. But it's definitely been crazy. Um, I had um, like, I'm gonna be honest, like on the other day, I had like a total mental breakdown because I was like, I like feel so like alone in a sense, because like, my parents love me so much that they're like, this just isn't like, this just isn't where you're supposed to be. Like you need, like, we want you to be healthy and we want you to be safe. And like being home around my mom right now just isn't the best place for me to be. And so it was definitely a really tough conversation to have because she had like, when all this first started down, I'm like, I love, I'm from Huntington beach, California. Like that's like the most beautiful place on earth to me. And I'm like, she was like, I want you to come home. Like, I want you to be here, like come home right now. And so of course I like pack all my stuff and I'm like expecting to be home for a while. And like, I'm expecting this to be kind of like my new routine, like being at home and figuring that out. And then a week and a half into it, she's like, I don't, I like all, all this stuff has been going on and it's getting worse, not better. And so she's like, I don't think this is where you need to be. And like hearing those words and then understanding that. And then with the Olympics being postponed, it was just a lot of different emotions all at once. And like under, like just really understanding how big of a deal this is and how important social distancing is and like how important like our health is right now that like my mom and me like really shouldn't be even near each other just goes to show you like how important this is right now. Right. all the respect to your mom for everything she's doing thank her a thousand times for us for everything she is doing uh, yeah. can't even imagine going yeah. into more not smaller necessarily but NCAA what were your thoughts when NCAAs were officially po- canceled actually what, what were your thoughts I mean me and um me and my friend were talking about this last night and you know, there are certain sports swimming, I think is very, very different. Um, there are certain sports where I think fans are some of the most important aspects of their game. I think football, basketball, I mean, the list goes on Their Fans are so important and they mean so much to games because they, they change things And I think it was really an incredible statement that when LeBron came out, which kind of spearheaded all of this stuff when he was like, you know, I'm not playing if fans aren't there because he knows how important they are. And they were about to host these events without fans. And it was just about to be, um, you know, just these kind of like your team. And like, I love the support of my team. I love like them being there, but I definitely think it'd be really hard to perform in front of no fans and then being an environment where like the NCAA where your, your, the fans are like kind of change or make and like they hype you up and you get this adrenaline rush when your name is called behind the blocks and you just hear the loud, the crowd just go crazy for you. And that can, that can make you swim faster. That can make you play better. That can make you, 
do all these things at a level that you didn't even know was possible. And that's because someone cheered for you. And that's because people riled you up. And so I think when all this stuff with the NCAA first happening and they started canceling, um, they said no fans. And then it was just parents. And then no parents, just swimmers. Like when that started happening, I was like, you can't, you can't like have these events without fans because that changes the ability of people to swim. That changes the people, the ability of people playing. And so, um, it was definitely, I think it was the right decision to make, even though it was such a hard thing to hear and people work so hard all year long. Some people hadn't been rested yet because they were resting for NCAAs. And so to really not understand their full potential is heartbreaking and it's awful. And like, I feel like I feel so, I feel so bad for them because it's like, I know what that's like. You wake up every day, 5 15 in the morning, you go to practice and you're like, I don't want to be here, but I have goals and I have things I want to accomplish and I have places I want to be. And when that's taken from you, that is a pain that like, like only certain people will ever experience in their, in their life. And so I think it was the right decision, but I think there have been a lot of like people have been having a really hard time with it. I mean, you, you mentioned kind of having a hard time with it. You're, you're a junior right now, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So you have, you have another year after this, but this year was obviously, it was cut short. Do you have a specific moment though, that like when you look back on this year, you're like, that was the moment that was my favorite time. Like, do you have a particular moment that kind of comes to your head when you think back on the year that has been, because you did accomplish a lot. You did do a lot, even though you didn't get to, you didn't get to see it through at NCAAs. What, what was one moment this season that kind of sticks out in your mind? Um, you know, I think like, I love, I love my, like, I have such an amazing team. I have such an amazing, I have such amazing coaches, like who really, have like been awesome during this whole transition they check in on us every day and they just make sure we're doing okay and they talk to us and they're like hey what's going on like we're here for you like we're going through this too like we love coaching you guys like I think a lot of people are thinking about the athletes in this situation but a lot of times you forget that the coaches are doing this too like Bob's been coaching for how long and now he can't coach and so that's weird too for him I'm sure like he's like going through the same thing like Rachel like they're going through the same things in us as us, but they're checking in on us. And I think something that's really been amazing during this whole experience is people are really like, they're really stopping what they're doing and they're stopping their issues to check on me, to check on my teammates, to make sure I'm doing okay. Because like, they're like, Oh no, like our athletes, like how are our athletes doing? And that's something that I think is really cool about ASU is like, I'm at fault for this, but they've always been checking in on me. I've never went to check in on them and something that like, it has nothing to do with the swimming or the training or the school or any of that. It just has to do with like being surrounded by the coaches I'm surrounded with, like in the administrators and our athletic director, like they're just telling us, they're just asking us how we're doing all the time. And that's been something that I think is so cool from this whole experience is we're really coming together. We were a family before, but now we're like inseparable. Like we're like, this is like put, this has made us so much stronger and is going to, and the changes that are going to be made as a team, as a culture, at the school, as a university and as a society are like amazing. And that's what I think I'm most excited for. And that's what I think I can look back on the most is like where we were when we started this season and where we're going to come out is so much stronger and so much better. And we're going to be so much more ready to handle adversity next season. And then when I'm gone, like the freshmen coming in are going to have so much adversity like that they've already gone through. They're going to be way better student athletes than I was as a freshman. And I think that's really cool. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And that's, what's really important, especially right now with, Back on the NCAA track a little bit, 
the NCAA recently granted an extra year of eligibility for spring sports students, and that's predominantly baseball, softball, outdoor track, and does not include swimming or winter sports. What are your thoughts on the NCAA granting that to spring sport athletes, but not winter sports? Is that the right move, just granting it to spring sports? Is it the right move in general, granting it at all? What, what are your thoughts? Um, so I live with two beach volleyball players at ASU. And so I kind of had a firsthand experience with two spring sport athletes not getting to finish or really even compete. Um, I think they competed in like three tournaments and they were slated to complete in like 15, 16 or something. I can't remember the numbers, but in my opinion, I think it was the right decision. Um, the thing that sucks, the thing that was hard about swimming is we competed in all of our conference championships and a lot of these other sports hadn't even gotten halfway and they hadn't even gotten close to those. And so I think that it was the right decision to grant those spring sport athletes another year, a thousand times. Like if that was the only thing the NCAA was going to do, they made the right decision. I do think it's really hard for swimming seniors right now who kind of weren't expecting this to happen. And then they were like, okay, well at least we have Olympic trials, you know, like, all right, I'll finish my season at Olympic trials. Um, I'll keep swimming and then we'll do that. But now we don't even have that now. And so it's like hard because I think of the recent things that have happened in the cancellation of meets, which is a very important decision. And I think that was the right move, but people also are being robbed of like their last swim ever, which is a really emotional and it's a really emotional time. And I think it's just made things a lot more difficult for people to leave on a good note, if that makes sense. So I do think it was the right decision, but I think it was just hard. I think it's still going to be really hard for swimmers who are ready to move on with their lives and have jobs and inter internships lined up. And so I think it definitely, a lot of people are going through really hard times right now. I mean, you, you mentioned obviously the, everybody across this country, any student athlete, you talk to them, they did certainly feel like they were robbed almost. And you being in the position you're in though, you're a junior right now. So you do have that, that one last year, I guess you could say of eligibility that honestly, it's all right. It's all just based on timing, right? Mm -hmm. You just so happen to be in 2020 and you have friends who are seniors, you have friends who are only freshmen who will get more opportunities after this, just sheerly based on timing, not even based on another year of eligibility or anything. When you get back into training, how will things change now that the Olympics have been postponed for another year? You know, they, people always talk about how training, you know, changes with the time of year and it changes based on the competition you're getting ready for. So what will happen with your training regiment and stuff once you guys are able to get back in the water, whenever that may be? Um, honestly, I think it's just going to be, I, th I really don't know to be completely honest because Bob does a really great job of setting things up. He, we get a piece of paper every single August and it says, this is what the training is going to look like right now, right now, right now, here, there, this is where the yardage is going to be at. This is where you're going to come down a little bit. This is the meets we're planning on going to. Like I knew every single meet I was going to go to from August to June. Like, and a lot of, pro, like a lot of people don't know that kind of stuff. Cause you kind of go with the flow and see where things are. And, yeah. but I already knew. And so, um, I think when we get back into it, it's going to all just be about not necessarily getting back into shape, but like getting the feel for the water again, coming back, not getting injured. Like this is going to be such an important time for athletes in any sport to come back slowly to come back smart, not to jump right into things because I haven't touched the water. I'm lucky. I got to swim a little bit longer than a lot of people did, but I haven't touched the water in a week, maybe a week and a half. And, um, oh, actually it's been a week this morning. If I were to come back in and jump in and do a 6,000 practice, a 6,000 yard practice, like I could really hurt my shoulders or I could really hurt my knees if I'm doing a lot of breaststroke or whatever it might be. And so coming back and being really smart and being really cautious 
and making sure I know my limitations. I tell my coaches what has been going on, like the communication. Like, I think this is an important time. And this is what I talked to my coaches about the other day was like, this is the time where communication is more important than ever because people have had different experiences like throughout this whole thing. And if I were to jump in and just be like, yeah, like I have been doing 6k practices when I have it. And they're like, all right, like we'll put more in this other group who's been swimming more and can handle it. And I get hurt. Like that's on me because I didn't communicate correctly. And so I think it's just going to be a timing of like easing back into it, knowing your body, knowing it's, it's been out of whack. Like for me personally, I haven't swam, like I haven't ever taken this much time off of swimming. I think since I, like, since I started like, swimmers like you don't take time off like it's just that's just not how it works I think I would take two weeks off every August and that's just been my life for the last 10 years and so for people to be like mm, we're gonna take like three months off I'm like <laughs> just like what like you're gonna tell me I can't get in a pool for three months and then I was like oh okay I'll start doing swimming in the ocean and then the beach is closed and you're like okay, well, now I'm really stuck. So I guess I'm taking three months off. So I think just being smart about everything when we get back into it is probably what the coaches are going to tell us when it, when that time comes. In your little bit extra time, I don't know what classes online have been like for you and working out. Are there any hobbies that you've picked up that you've always wanted to or, or started something? Like I know my family, we started a thousand piece puzzle that's nearly impossible. <laughs> Is there anything that you yourself have picked up that you've always wanted to? Um, so like I said before, I'm like such an outdoors person. I have never been really into like movie, like I like movies, but like, I don't like, I, I don't really watch a lot of movies. I don't really like play a lot of board games. I don't really play a lot of, I don't like build Legos a lot. And so, um, and paint, I'm never really like, I'm not like a super, like I am creative, but I never like sit down and take the time. I'm like so ADHD that like painting is like, just like way too much concentration and focus. And I just like lose. It. I'm like, nah, like I'm just going to go run somewhere. Like just like get my heart rate up. Cause I really enjoy that feeling, I guess. And so, um, yesterday, me and my friend, her um, family has um, Legos from like first edition Lego, Star Wars Legos from like the 1980s. And they're like worth a lot of money. And so yesterday we've been like building Legos and I never really thought I would enjoy building Legos, but Legos are really cool. Like I didn't realize that. And then I learned how to play Remy Cube, which I guess is weird that I never knew how to play. And so I did that. Um, what else did I do? What else have I been doing? Um, oh, I've been reading a lot. That's been really fun. I really, I've been like learning a lot about reading and like all that stuff. So I guess like, just like doing like really random things that I never thought I would do. A lot of people have been talking about how they're like, oh, like all those things you said you would do, like now you finally have the time to do. I never thought I would build like <laughs> in my free time. And so I think a lot of this stuff is just like so random that I like, like, yeah, I have nothing else to do. So this sounds fun. So what book are you reading and what have you built from the Lego Star Wars? <laughs> uh, I don't, okay, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest. I have no idea what it's called. It's like a droid flyer thing. It's like, I don't know. It has like these big wheels. It's like TIE a- TIE Fighter? What? <laughs> TIE Fighter? Is it a little ball wings on the end? Yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah. I'm, I'm, a, like, I'm a nerd. <laughs> It's like 4,000 pieces. They're like all these like little tiny things. And I like, we started doing it and I was like, oh my God, this is going to take us hours. We got like, we started doing it, took a break, learn, and then I learned how to play Remy Cube. So I was like, that's cool. Um, but I started reading, oh, I'll get it. I started reading this book about a, one of the guys on my team, 
Jack Dolan gave it to me. It's called Fearless. Six operated Adam Brown, who kind of just talks about like he was like went through all these like adversity and changes and how like he was able to come from like being like a not a like not a good person and then he found himself and like went to the military and became one of the most like decorated SEAL team members of all time and it just kind of goes through his story and tells it and it's like one of my favorite books I've ever read and I don't really read never really been a reader and so like this has been something that's really cool because I didn't understand how much you could learn about yourself listening to someone else's story and like you could really find like things that you didn't know that you were lacking that like can make you a better person and I'm always my whole thing is I just want to be a better person every day and I do things and I try to do something good for other people and so this book has been like a really great resource for me that's awesome. That's really awesome. And I, Nora, I think we've kind of touched on all of it. Nicole, unless you have w- anything else that you want to touch on with her. Um, I think you know. we've recovered it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, from the, your mental state outside of the pool to where you're at physically, I mean, it sounds like you're doing about as best as you possibly can be right now. So Um, Thank you so much for taking the time and everything and, you know, best of luck, be safe. We're praying for, of course, for your family and for your mother who's fighting on the front lines of this, you know, Um, from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say thank you to her as well, because she's keeping art. She's keeping obviously the city safe and the country and everything. I know, you know, I'm from Huntington Beach as well. So, um, yeah, uh, I mean, California is like crazy place right now. Everyone is like, ah, like we have like, because everyone lives so close there, and so my mom is, like, she's such a tough lady, she's beat cancer, like, she's gonna be, she's gonna fight through this, so she can, she can do anything, and so I'm just really happy to have her on, like, I get to represent her, too, which is really cool, because, you know, she's doing things that a lot of people aren't, they forget about, like, they forget that doctors and nurses still have to go to work every day, and, you know, there's still a lot of people out there who are getting exposed, and, they're putting their lives on the line so I could sit at home and read and play Legos and do stuff like that. So I'm really lucky to have someone like her in my life, but thank you guys. Yeah. We, we thank her a thousand times and all the best to you, your family, everyone.